guys. Good morning, everyone. Um, we are team number six, CE Beams, the mechanically fast and MFRP scripts for strengthening concrete beams. Uh, my name is Mutasim Abdo. This is Sal Minkowski, team leader, Jim Lambert, Ryan Wasek. Our faculty advisor is Dr. Vicka Brown. And uh, we have three sponsors for our project, Action Supplies from Well over Arkansas. Fiber reinforced polymer FRP is a composite uh, material composed of glass and carbon fibers and a polymer reason. Uh, FRP is used, can be used to repair and strengthen uh, reinforced concrete beams and slabs that are subjected to <coughs> deterioration. Uh, the restoration method is to reinforce concrete structure that are subjected to deterioration, and uh, FRP typically bonded to concrete substrate with epoxy adhesive. And the alternative fastening method we did use is the mechanically fastened fast uh, FRP, <coughs> which have uh, more gradual ductile uh, Bearing failure. As you see in the bottom picture, it's, uh, it shows a real, a real life application uh, in the for the FRP material. Uh, we have to use two different types of uh, bolts in our test to connect the FRP material to the concrete specimen. They were cost-effective restoration solutions and uh, very easy to install. Uh, the main advantage is to give gradual ductile failure made of uh, mode and bearing. Our objectives are to develop a mathematical load slip model for the mechanically fast NFRP connections, also to examine effects of very anchor bolts uh, manufacture uh, dimensions and layout on the connection behavior. Uh, this was accomplished by doing a uh, shear test of 20, of 20 of the mechanically fastened FRP to the concrete connection. Moreover, we had to design, test setup, and test fixture to carry out the test shear. Now I'm going to pass it to Ryan to talk about our design. As you can see here, this is a brief overview of our schedule. Uh, our uh, research phase um, went from September to November. Our design phase took place from October to January. <coughs> our uh, construction phase took place from January to March. Uh, testing was in April, or March and April. And uh, our evaluation took place in April. Uh, this is a slight modification off of our original proposed a schedule due to uh, a more lengthy design period than we originally anticipated. There were a lot of modifications to our uh, design. Uh, here's our budget. Uh, we originally had $1,835. Uh, to date, we spent $1,250, and we still anticipate on spending an additional $350 in additional, uh, additional materials. So for our research, you can see we had to research various uh, portions of our project, uh, ranging from uh, what type of FRP material we were going to be using, uh, our anchor bolt specifications, um, our shear connection test method, how we were going to properly test for direct shear, um, our uh, bolt fastening methods, the anchor bolts need to be bolt, uh, bolted to certain specifications, our uh, test fixture design, and uh, what um, instrumentation that we will be using for this project. All right, our uh, overall uh, design took place in two steps. First, we had to design our uh, specimens, which consisted of a concrete block fastened to FRP strips using anchor bolts. In the uh, table, you can see 
the uh, different bolt sizes as well as manufacturer and number of bolts in each test that we used. You can also see we have the amount of tests per each configuration listed. The second portion of our design can be broken up into two parts. The first part is a test fixture to house our concrete specimens. This consisted of two steel plates held together by four threaded rods. The second portion of this was a custom grip manufactured to hold the FRP in tension. Uh, both of these were designed to fit within our uh, Tinius Olsen testing machine that we have, and they were both designed to have a max load capacity of 10,000 pounds. Now Tom will talk to you about our construction and testing. Uh, after the design phase was completed, we need to begin, needed to begin to gather our materials to start the construction phase. Uh, the first step of our construction was to build our uh, formwork for the concrete molds. Uh, we, did, we built our formwork to hold 30 molds to give us 10 extra just in case we needed uh, <coughs> something to turn out well and we needed to run additional testing. Uh, Action Supply Co. provided us with a 6,000 PSI uh, concrete design mix. And uh, after 28 days, we ran uh, compressive, after the 28 day curing period, uh, we ran compressive uh, tests and the concrete turned out to be 8,000 PSI <coughs> compressive strength. Uh, after the formwork was completed, uh, we needed the two steel plates, 18 inches by 18 inches, that were provided for us by Rourke and Sons. <coughs> and uh, the two steel plates were uh, joined together using the quarter inch threaded rod to complete the upper portion of the test fixture. And uh, the grip on the lower portion was connected to the cross head and uh, the FRP to complete the lower portion of the test fixture. The FRP material was bolted to the concrete specimens using anchor bolts to complete the final construction of the test specimens. Um, in this picture, you can see the final test setup of our uh, test fixture inside the testing machine. Uh, you can see the test specimen is fixed inside of the test fixture with the FRP gripped at the bottom. And uh, the instrumentation used is a deflectometer, which is a silver box, and uh, LVDT and uh, strain gauges. Uh, also, the uh, Navigator computer program was set up to work with the deflectometer to uh, gather the readings from the deflectometer and the loading parameters during our testing. Uh, the deflectometer was used to measure the free end slip of the FRP, and uh, there was a hook actually fixed to the top of the FRP strips to pull down on the LVDT or to pull down on the deflectometer to gather the readings. Uh, the LVDT was used to measure the deformation in the concrete, which I, uh, turned out to be pretty minimal after our testing. Uh, the crosshead position was used for the loaded end slip, and we had strain gauges, as you can see in the pictures, uh, uh, applied above the bolts, below the bolts, and in the middle of the FRP strips. Uh, these locations of strain gauges allowed us to get a good idea of the strain that was occurring inside of the FRP strips. Um, as we were testing, we noticed, uh, we witnessed a gradual bearing failure in the FRP with large slip deformations. Uh, for the quarter inch bolts that we tested, we noticed a bearing failure, or deformation prior to bearing failure of about one inch for the quarter inch bolts, and a deformation prior to bearing failure of about 0.8 inches for the 3 8 inch bolts. Uh, now I'll give it to Jeff for uh, the results. Okay, um, the two graphs of slate show a load versus slip comparison for the quarter inch by two and a quarter inch bolts. We have two different graphs to do, uh, show the two different manufacturers that were tested. Um, as you can see, both graphs have uh, pretty consistent results. And also, both graphs have a linear distribution for about the first 100,000 pounds. Then fluctuation occurs in the load. Um, but in all the deformation still increases until failure. Um, this fluctuation was most likely due to cracking or bearing within the FRP along the bolted connections. Um, if you take a look at the thunder studs, you can see that most of the failure is due to uh, shear in the bolted connections, whereas in all the healthy connections were failing due to bearing in the FRP. Um, if you take a look at this graph, this shows um, also a low versus slip comparison, but this is comparing the healthy one quarter inch bolts compared to the healthy three inch diameter bolts. Um, like before, it's a pretty similar characteristics with a linear distribution and followed by fluctuation. Yet, as you can see, the blue uh, darker line is the one quarter inch healthy bolts with a lower ultimate load and a longer deformation period compared to the rest of the three diameter bolts which had a higher ultimate load, yet shorter deformation period. Um, just 
So today we have six remaining tests to continue uh, and finish. <coughs> if you look at the picture to the right, it shows one of the configurations we'll be doing, which is a double configuration. We're also be testing triple configuration bolts. Once we have all this data completed, we're going to create a load slip model, which is represented in the picture to the left. Once we have that, we'll be able to uh, represent a bilinear relationship, which is a dark, high, uh, black highlighted line, which is two uh, different slopes, um, starting from the left, continuing with a steep slope, and finishing with a softer slope to the right. In conclusion, the anchor bolts are mechanically fastened to FRP using a ductile failure. Um, typically, the slip deformation is about one inch before failure. Um, the ultimate strength of the FRP connections were increased slightly um, by the bolt, bolt diameters, but um, the deformation decreased. This was somewhat unexpected because we thought that a larger diameter would have had a more significant increase in ultimate load. Um, to validate our compute conclusion, um, more tests should be done to support the bilinear relationship slip model. And also, we should um, check more on the assumption of bulk diameters do not support a significantly higher load. Any questions? <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. 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 Thank you.